Hey everyone, Jim Ewing with ProVision Solutions. As a follower of Jesus Christ, the Lord has a purpose and His plan for each of us. Now that's exciting. But how do we go about that? Well, we're excited to introduce the Marketplace Ministries Network, a collaborative, caring, and supportive community with a shared vision and passion for encouraging believers to be active in the marketplaces of life. Our desire and primary focus is to help those both launching and growing a business, a ministry area, or a special project, as well as those helping them as resource and service providers, and all in ways that positively represent Jesus Christ. Please consider this to be your invitation to participate with us as part of a collaborative Christian community that's growing and supporting each other. We'll have more detail on that in the comments related to this video. I know it would be great to have you involved. Thank you. It was a pleasure to have Dr. Eldon Weeb present Serving Others Well Through Your Christian Business. Dr. Weeb is an Associate Professor of Management at the King's University in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. He's the former Dean at the Leader School of Business at the King's University. He has a Master of Arts in Biblical Theology from Regent College in Vancouver, British Columbia, and he's written various publications related to faith and work. We trust you'll enjoy his presentation, Dr. Weeb. Thank you, Jim. And uh, thank you everyone for joining us and uh, especially for uh, those who have already shared today. Uh, today, I want to uh, focus on some research uh, that a colleague and uh, myself have done. Um, yeah, now, this is some years ago and, and we, we went to Christian businesses uh, across Canada <clears throat> and um, and so so what I'm presenting to you actually comes out of that. And let me just show you this. So this is the book where uh, this research is written up. Uh, let me also say I I don't benefit from this at all. It, but it's it's there um, if you're interested. The book is Faith and Work: Christian Perspectives, Research, and Insights into the movement, and you can find that on, uh, on Amazon if you wish. All right, so let me, let me turn to the, um, the actual slide set that I have here. Uh, I want to begin uh, really with something of the question that, that uh, Jim asked as we got started today. And uh, um, well, actually, let me just preface all of this by saying I've already seen some really good points in the, in the chat box in terms of, you know, really paying attention to, um, uh, you know, who who your customers are, what their needs are, and, and so on and so forth. And uh, so hopefully this is uh, an additional supplement that, that can give you some additional uh, things to be thinking about and working through and praying through. So of course, customer service and product excellence are indeed outcomes. And I would suggest that they really do flow from our fundamental beliefs and our commitments to the Lord himself. Um, there's something of a pathway that I want to share with you um, in terms of serving your customers and your clients well. And for that matter, even expanding those customers and clients. Um, so I'll be walking you through that in this presentation, but it's not a real typical pathway, if you will. Uh, it has a story format to it. And so uh, I hope you'll be able to bear with me as I try to work through this and explain it. Um, and uh, through all of this, of course, we're gonna pay particular attention to our Christian foundations and to the implications that it has. So we started with this question, what makes your business Christian? I was uh, challenged uh, considerably by 
uh, the namesake of our business school, the Leader School of Business. John Leader asked, what makes your business school Christian? What makes King's University Christian? And please don't point to the fact that the name Christian is in your name. And, uh, and it really made me stop and think. Uh, we can't just claim it uh, as if, you know, since we ourselves are Christian, therefore the business is Christian. We need, in fact, to operate in such a way that we are reflecting um, our Christian faith, that we are operating within a view of the world where, um, you know, we, we, are, we are really seeing through the eyes of the Lord, uh, the world around us. And in getting to that for ourselves, one of the best ways uh, that I've experienced with, uh, you know, the people that we did research with and so on, was to just simply say to them, tell me the story of, of your business. And so as we go through this, I want you to be thinking for yourself, what's the story of my business? Or what is the story of my place within the business I work? How do I operate? What does that look like? Um, and so as I say here, it could be about the overall business if you are running one. Um, it can also be about very day-to-day -day issues, encounters with people, various clients, employees, suppliers, and so on. What kind of stories come out um, as you go about pursuing business? What does it look like? Right. So it will allow you uh, to see who is part of that story or what is part of that story, um, what people are involved or what kinds of things might be involved, technology, for example, what kind of ideas are driving uh, what you do um, or where you're aiming. Uh, the story of your business will also allow you to see very fundamental values by which you are operating. So as an example, extreme example, I guess, um, many of you have heard the phrase, the business of business is business. Um, and what this fundamentally means is that this is about profit over everything. Profit is what matters and really the only thing that matters. And we do what we do in order to make profit. It's really not about a whole bunch of other things well-being of employees, for example, that's that might only be important in terms of earning profit. So profit is the trump card here, pardon the pun. Contrast this with the business of business is people. And here you might have more of a fundamental value that people are first. And if you take care of the people, they will in fact take care of the business. Treat your people well. If you really care for your employees, they will care for, uh, care for your clients and uh, things will go uh, better than you perhaps would ever anticipate. So what the story of, of your business reveals is that if you are indeed operating your business from the foundation of Christ, then your business will express Christian faith. <clears throat> it will express Christian values in the very practical working out uh, of your business and all the things you do day by day. And it will make your business a place of healing, healing for employees, healing for the people you interact with, healing for clients and customers. So really indeed for all of your stakeholders. So here's the basic story and the basic elements of the story. Uh, this was new to me many years ago now, uh, and I'm sure it's new to you. So, so please bear with me as I try to walk through this and, uh, and we'll see how we can move forward with it. So the center, is the one who initiates the action. And from a Christian perspective, we would, we would hope 
that our story reflects that the sender is in fact God himself. So the sender initiates the action by commissioning an agent. And in that case, that would be you and I. Um, and you know, by extension, if you're running a business, it would be your business um, or you're managing an area. So God has commissioned you um, in this particular area of the business you're participating with. And you're being commissioned to convey an object uh, to the receiver, uh, something of benefit, something of blessing to a particular person, or it could be the environment, for example. Um, uh, it, it, it could be, you know, clients when it comes to consulting, it could be customers who receive your products. Um, it could be, um, you know, people you're helping through a nonprofit organization, for example. So, so God is wanting to bring blessing to someone or something. He has commissioned you to do it as the agent to bring that about. But then you further as the agent are being uh, opposed. So there's the opponent. You're being opposed to the action God wants you to do. But on the other hand, you are also being helped to do what God, God uh, in fact, wants you to do. So, so the basic path is, is uh, really seeing that whole picture and saying, is God at work commissioning me, um, empowering me, calling me to serve in such a way as to bring about a blessing of some kind to someone or to something such as the environment? And who is it that's helping? Who is it that's hindering? Or what is it that might be hindering and what might be helping? So these are the basic story elements. Um, and I picked this stuff up from Tom Wright, uh, who is a former Bishop of Durham. So let me give you an example of one of the companies that we uh, looked at. Uh, this company is in Vancouver. It's a consulting company. They are a PR and communications company. And um, uh, as they got started, it the 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 goal was was very normal, as it might be for for all of us, and that is to earn a living for one's family. So they were trusting God to provide their company with work such that they could earn a living. And they had made a commitment as they, as they began their, their company um, that integrity was critical. And Jim, you pointed to that earlier. Um, and they were gonna operate from their faith base. They have a strong faith in Christ. Um, they live it out and they did not want to compromise that in, in any way whatsoever. As they got started, one of the um, uh, folks in the industry uh, knew that they had this Christian faith and literally said to them, uh, I think it's gonna hamper you. And, you know, one of the, uh, uh, one of the owners replied, she said, you know, we, we're not interested in being involved with a client that wants us to lie. And he reiterated, you're going to run into problems. You're not going to find work, uh, you know. So as you look at the right side there, who's the opponent? Well, there are business world assumptions that you're just going to need to do whatever it's going to take. Um, job opportunities are going to come up. Some of those are going to be maybe unethical. So mm, uh, you, know, you might have to just fudge things. And clients themselves were saying, well, yeah, you know, if we're going to hire you, we need you to do this, even if it's not uh, uh, without, without full integrity. Well, this Vancouver consulting company decided that that was not going to be the way they would operate. They were going to operate with integrity out of their faith base. 
And uh, from it came some wonderful things. So first, as they said no to clients that literally wanted them to, to lie um, knowingly, um, it, it gave them a tremendous amount of confidence for future circumstances. Because during that time where they said no to clients, they were really strapped for cash. Um, it was tight, tight, tight going. And Jim, you would know from startups, that's what it's like often. So it was tight. And they said, no, we're not compromising. And in fact, God provided the work for them. Uh, they turned down the ethical work. They prayed. They waited on the Lord. God provided. Well, that gave them courage. And as they continued to work this way, they found that it began to really hone their, their discernment. They were, in their words, able to better define a client for them or define a better client for themselves. So they began to, to really notice, um, you know, what is this person really looking for? What are they truly trying to, to have us do? And, and as they really honed that discernment uh, based in integrity, um, they, they in fact became the smell test for a lot of other companies. So there'd be a project that was getting proposed, lots of consultants around the table, things would get talked out. And as this company said, hmm, no, we're not here, we're, we're out, several others would also leave with them because they came to see this company as a company of integrity and that they indeed were the smell test. And they said, if they can't handle it, we're not, we're not in either, we're, we're out of here. So it became a blessing to, to other companies. Uh, then third, um, their stance of faith, their integrity, uh, their desire to honor the Lord, their desire to honor uh, others as made in the image of God, led to uh, the development of what I refer to as competitive advantage. Um, they were a, a company that as they worked with a developer, they could they could literally get down into the nitty gritty of community members. They heard all sorts of issues coming out of communities where a development was gonna take place. And a key part of that was that they truly listened. They truly honored people as made in the image of God that God wanted to bless. And so they would gather up all kinds of great information and uh, they'd harness all this energy, they'd bring it back to the developer and together they would truly create a mutually beneficial land development, something that community members were really thankful for and proud of later on. And uh, the interesting thing about this was that there were other companies in the same business who would literally call them up and say, how do you do it? How, how in the world do you get such great information from you know, community members and so on? And they would, you know, tell them. Um, but ultimately, these other companies could not replicate it. And it's fundamentally because they did not have the commitment to the Lord that this company had. So the commitments of these other companies were somewhere else. Maybe it was to the money. Maybe it was just do whatever the developer wants. Um, and ultimately, they were just simply not able to perform uh, nearly as well. And what ultimately happened with this is that this company became uh, known for their integrity, uh, known for their good work, and they got increasingly complex um, uh, projects to work on. And, um, and they became very well known within the city. So what I want to show you here is that um, as we trust in the Lord, as we really move forward in faith, in grace, uh, in trust, 
honoring him, um, looking to him, and never compromising that peace, we find that God actually proliferates the goodness that comes. And he proliferates our resources to, in fact, do that work of blessing of others. And so what I have here in this slide is, is um, something of a, I hope, a visual of that. As this company worked, they began to, of course, impact communities well. They really brought blessing to their clients. Um, then they started to be called on by the Sauter School of Business to be involved with MBA students. And in particular, uh, one of the principals, the female, um, you know, had great opportunity to talk with female MBA students to, to just share insights and, and wisdom, uh, making a big difference in their lives. Coworkers were moved by their faith and even casual acquaintances came to respect them in, in ways that, you know, uh, stereotypes would, would not have allowed. So for example, oh, you're one of those people, you're a Christian. Well, then they came to recognize them as just fantastic people. And then, and then it becomes kind of a, well, so what is this Christian thing? And it gives you an opportunity to share. Um, one thing along with this slide, though, that I want to point out is that opposition does not go away. And sometimes it, in fact, intensifies. So they faced organized opposition. They faced threats. There was misinformation and misrepresentation that was put out in public, uh, demeaning them. There were dirty tricks being played. Um, so as things wrap up in terms of God's increased blessing for others. Uh, and as God wraps up the uh, really the grace that he gives you to be able to do those things, recognize too that opposition does not disappear, but you have greater strength to actually face and deal with that opposition. So uh, in the next slides, I just want to touch on on some key things that might be more like being in the nitty gritty of um, doing your business um, under God, with God, uh, to bring blessing to others. And, on, and I wanna start with this idea of prayer, that at the very center of things um, is our relationship with God. And a fundamental piece of that is prayer. So here's a quote from a, um, a food manufacturer uh, in Quebec, Christian man, uh, about 160 employees or so. And basically he just said, look, don't try to manage in his way with him without praying a lot. <laughs> You're not gonna be able to do it. You must pray, you must pray, you must pray. And indeed, one of the things that he pointed out is that he had been thinking, how do I actually manage the business so that we, we pull together the spiritual life and our work life, you know, so there's no split. And he says, in fact, I slowly discovered that work could and should become itself silent prayer. Another key piece is what is your vision? Vision is all such a central part of strategic management. And God, God gives big visions. Sometimes they start small, as you saw with the consulting company. It's about providing work so that you can earn a living, provide for your family. But then it, it grows and it expands and it, and, it, and, it, and it begins to bring blessing to so many more. What is your vision? Do you have a bigger vision? So someone running a restaurant um, out in Nova Scotia pointed out that I believe when you have a bigger vision than yourself about doing something, and because I'm doing this restaurant, so many other people are being affected in a good way. That works. It's aligned with God, she says. And in fact, she has, through this restaurant, um, 
affected a big change in Nova Scotia for local food and for organic food and for really uh, providing healthy food for people and healthy ways of farming so that the land isn't uh, destroyed. The CEO of an industrial farm operation was told me about a very difficult land rent deal that he had. And he was working with a person that was just so very difficult. And he stuck with it because he discerned that God had a higher purpose here. There was a bigger purpose at stake in that relationship. So he says, it could have just been a transaction. It could have been something that I could have walked away from. But ultimately, he said, I felt like I needed to stay a part of this person's life somehow, even if it was as painful as it was. So God calls us to stuff that isn't necessarily what you would do from simple business logic. Then there's the issue of leadership. And uh, this quote here is fantastic. This is an engineer uh, running an engineering company. They do projects all over the world. And he said, what is God calling us to do? To me, it's to love and to serve. Those are the two fundamental things. And from that, you get mercy. Mercy means that, to forgive, to let go, to allow mistakes, whatever. Mercy plays that role. To love means that you are called to give up yourself. You become the servant rather than the leader. And as becoming the servant, you become even more powerful than the leader. It means that when I use the idea that I am actually here serving these people, whoever they are, then I lose selfishness, which is very natural, very natural for any other human being to be selfish. And God calls us to precisely this, servant leadership. It's about him. It's not us. It's about serving those rather than lording it over them. Uh, it's about um, losing self in the sense of losing our selfishness and turning our heart to the Lord. Then there are the issue of interactions. So um, uh, our industrial farm CEO said, you know, fundamentally, look, if, if God isn't a part of everything, well, th then it's just a tag on that we have on some of our, our company literature. Another of our uh, company leaders said one thing about the spirituality in our work is that we have, and this isn't always easy, it's a discipline, and that is to see our clients and our supporters, but also our opposition as children of God, as people who are loved by God, and not losing that perspective that they are people loved by God. Amazing. Um, especially when you think about the opposition side of it, to recognize that God is at work reconciling the world to himself, and that includes those who may be opposing you. Well, then there's our interactions with employees that's so important as well. And it's really important to respect uh, others. And so um, our engineer again writes, it's really important that respect is given as well as received. So I treat everyone here the same as I treat everybody in the field. It could be the laborer who's working. It's important to care about every single person. And uh, our food, uh, production, preparation person said, I bring spirituality to the workplace so that people are not reduced to the level of a simple tool, a resource, or capital in the service of prosperity and profit. Instead, it's done not to increase productivity, but out of love for people. Business logic always looks to people as tools. It, it is highly instrumental in the way um, management thinking works. You need to be doing something in order to get something. Um, and in this respect, as we operate from our love for the Lord, these indeed are people whom we need to love, not simply for what they can do for us. And then there's interactions between staff. So our farming community person said, in all these staff, sometimes there are ego issues. It becomes a problem. You know, 
every company has them. And we know some of the big issues that go on between, say, marketing and, you know, production or engineering um, or R&D and upper management. I mean, there's all kinds of issues that show up in all kinds of places. And one of the things that he pointed out is that here in this company, if somebody's got an ego problem of selfishness, because of that Christian faith, it actually gets worked on and it gets better. It doesn't have to explode, you know, before it gets dealt with. And he says, that's where I think there's a huge difference between our company and a lot of other companies that he was familiar with. Uh, decision making. Now, this is going to sound a little cheesy, maybe, or a little bit even. Um, childish, uh, but there's something really profound here. When I think about it, what would God do? And then it puts me right back to a good spot. It always puts me right back in line. It's almost like, okay, what would Jesus do? And that snaps me right back, and I always make a good decision, a good decision afterwards, no matter if it's an embarrassment to me, or I have to eat my words, or apologize, or whatever. I always stand on my feet better. So we kind of laugh at the, you know, WWJD, and yet it's not a laughing matter. It really is to say, am I checking my ego at the door? Am I checking my pride at the door? My selfishness? I am here to serve the living God. Now, what would he want me to do? Maybe one that's a little <laughs> more broad. This is a great quote. And so marketing, new product development, quality control, all had an importance in the company that went far beyond their economic importance. In short, those who ate our products were human beings that God lived in and loved. I knew that this conviction gave us a special spiritual strength to make new and better products but also to give better service to consumers. So fundamentally, if we have a view of the world that says these are people made by the Lord, loved by the Lord, um, that he is desiring for them to get to know him, how do I then go about marketing to these people? What kind of products do I, do I um, focus on to to? bring blessing to their lives. Um, what kind of product quality am I going to supply to them? All these things become uh, qualified within a context of um, loving your neighbor as yourself, loving the Lord your God first and foremost, uh, recognizing that God is seeking all people to come to know him and that you can be a part of that. Uh, in summation, I just want to say here that uh, these business leaders, really across the board, they believe that God was involved in, and and they were, and that God was directing everything that they, they did. They believe that God was at work, even in the situations where they weren't aware that behind the scenes God was working away and doing things. And they believe that God was and is indeed accomplishing His agenda of reconciliation and restoration in the world. And having experienced that God provides more and more resources for their work, which slash is also his work, uh, over time they experience that he produces a proliferation of goodness that goes far beyond that initial goal you know, that the business was set up to uh, or established on. So I want to just say, may the Lord bless you to do his work through your business uh, and to experience that same wellspring of grace that comes from him. Thank you, John. Thanks for being with us. We trust you found this to be helpful. And if so, please give us a like, a follow, and a share. You know, the Bible says in Matthew 5, 16, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. If you're launching or growing a business, a ministry area, or a special project, or if you're involved in helping them as a resource or service provider, we'd love to have you participate with us. Stay informed of upcoming events 
and items of interest by subscribing to the Marketplace Ministries update sent out periodically. May God bless you as you do your best to faithfully represent Jesus Christ in the marketplaces of life.